I think honestly, you're, you're the best interviewer I've ever seen in wrestling. And the, the way that you have always approached it is with this both remarkable professionalism and research, but the entertainment aspect is there because you're dealing with sports entertainment. You have to have a mix of those to, to me to keep an audience engaged. Like when you're refining something like that, it, is there ever like sort of a give and take in that sense for you where you're like, damn, maybe I want to turn it up and be a little more entertaining, but I want to scale it back and get this answer and be professional. But I mean, ultimately what you're trying to do is just engage the audience. Yeah, that that's what it is. Um, it is. It, it's a product. It's entertainment. I always said yeah. that. Like the best guest for a show uh, is at the crossroads of engaging and entertaining and knowledgeable. If one is absent, it's a dead end street. So sometimes people would question us. We had a series timeline where we would have one guest chronicle one year in wrestling, and sometimes people would question who. Oh, he never had the heavyweight title that year. Yes. But the guy that did is very unavailable. Yes. And the guy below him will put you to sleep if you listen to their voice for two hours. So you had to find right guest, right show. So we needed someone to be able to talk about that entire year. They had to be working near the top of the card to be involved in all the TV tapings so that they could talk about everything that went on in whatever, 1987. Um, but also be funny so yes. the year i cited 1987 was the hockey talk man <laughs> entertaining intercontinental champion perfect he could talk about everything that went on in 1987 so entertainment value was very important to me uh we had top of the line research anthony was my business partner in the company and the one who did all of the the research to a to the detriment of his eyes and, and his health, probably, uh, how much we did to make sure. Because, listen, with a timeline, you're talking about 20 years it, ago, 30 years ago in some cases. An unreal amount of research. Like, because you all, not only that, you're displaying the, some of the notes on the screen as well. So right. we get to physically see a lot of the research that went into this. People also often ask, why, why cut to the, the words? Well, in my mind, I, I'd said... No one will ever write a total compendium about the history of the WWE. Yeah. No one will do it. Or someone will do it. It'll be research. It'll be some historian or podcast host who's going to research and write it. But what if we got each chapter written by the top worker, that one of the top workers that year? And if, you're, and if your DVD shelf was almost like a huge book with all the chapters. So it was almost like you read the beginning of a chapter, March 1st, 1987, the Honky Tonk Man defeats, blah, blah, blah. And then Honky comes out of the page and begins to talk to you about that time. That was my very acid trippy vision of timeline. And that's why the text, because it was kind of like a book come to life in my mind. And I mean, then there were times where like you would happen to be be like, okay, oh, Vince Russo wrote the show. He's available. Bret Hart was at the top of the card. He is available. Like you never know what you're going to get. And then there's some, admittedly, I went into Brian Myers and I was like, well, why'd they get this guy? Then I watched it and I said, oh, that's why they got this guy. Because he is all those things. He's engaging and funny and, oh, he was around the top of the card at that time too. It just didn't like really stand out in your mind that he was. I was surprised sometimes when I would call Anthony and go, listen, so-and-so is available. Anthony would be like, he was only there six months that year. <laughs> I'm like, really? And I look it up, particularly in the, the earlier days. Now guys stay around for forever, but yeah. guys would cycle the territories, come in and do six months, eight months WWE, and then go to Portland or whatever, right? So we'd uh, I'd come up with a name, and I'm like, that's great. We'll have him do like 1976 and be like, he wasn't there. And then, so I'd say, well, who was there? And you go through the research, you look at all the match histories, like on the history of WWE.com, places that compile this stuff, and you go, Kevin Sullivan. I go, no, I can't have Kevin Sullivan on a WWE show. And I'd look, and the fucking guy did Fair. jobs. I don't know what year is 1976, but like one of those years, Sullivan jobbed for almost 12 months there. And nobody else was there. Top of the card, 
middle of the card, guys would cycle. So I was even surprised at some of the names that we would have to have cover entire years. 